Okay, guys, more on the library in Logic Pro X. Let's go in deeper now. Um, I've got myself a Lavazza to help me get through this. Hang on, let's just have a slurp of that. Oh, I love Lavazza coffee. Right. Here's Logic. Okay. As we know, we select a track. Its channel appears on the left of the inspector column. By default, the blue triangle points to the channel strip setting slot at the top. Therefore, we can load entire channel strip presets from the library, which populate the entire channel for different types of tracks. We can also make the blue triangle point to any type of slot inside the channel. We then see the library for the individual item that the blue triangle is pointing to, and we can load presets from the library for the individual item in an individual slot, whether it's a MIDI effect, an instrument, an amp, a pedal board, or an effect a processor. Right? Okay. Now, let's look in the mixer. Bear in mind, if you didn't know this, when we select a track, the inspector column shows the channel for that selected track on the left here. It's just a mirror of the one in the mixer. Right? This inspector column shows the channel for the selected track, so we don't have to bother opening the mixer every time to get access to the channel for the selected track. It's always available here on the left of the inspector column. This is just a copy of the channel for the selected track in the mixer. In the mixer, if I select all my tracks, they're all highlighted, and that makes all of their channels be highlighted as well in the mixer. The order in the mixer always follows the order of the track column here. That's just how it works. Logic users for years have been saying to Apple, please make it so we can get these channels in the mixer and drag them around in the mixer in any order we want, but Apple have never let that happen. The order of channels in the mixer always follows the order of tracks in the track column. So if I select all the tracks in the track column, so they're all highlighted, all of their channels are highlighted in the mixer. And then when you get to the final channel, for the final track in the track column, from that point on until the final stereo out of Logic's mixer, mm. you then get all of the auxiliary effects returns and any group buses that always live after the channels for the tracks in the track column. All right now, these auxiliary effects returns and group buses. We'll make some group buses in a moment. They have channel strip setting slots at the top as well. Now in the mixer, I can go to any auxiliary return channel strip, click on the channel strip setting slot at the top, and I can access factory channel strip setting slots for effects returns. These are all effects based channel strip presets that will load up chains of effects, multi-effects ones, delay-based ones, reverb ones, etc. Right? And you can load from here. But wouldn't it be nice if we could load all of our channel strip presets for effects returns from the library as well? But more importantly, wouldn't it be nice if we could create our own chains of auxiliary return effects and save those to the library as user-created auxiliary return channel strip presets. Right? Okay, now there are bugs in Logic. Okay? There's a bug in Logic. Let me show you something. Let's go back here. I select this instrument track. Its channel appears on the left of the inspector column, which is just a copy of the one in the mixer, right? They're the same. On the right of the inspector column, if you didn't know, the channel on the right of the inspector column is always the destination channel 
but the channel on the left, which is the channel for the selected track. So this analog polysynth track, its channel, there's the output slot, is going to the final stereo out of Logic's mixer. So on the right of the inspector column, we see a copy of Logic's final stereo output channel, because that's the destination for this channel for this selected track. But, if, but this channel for the selected instrument track has got two auxiliary sends on it. One of them is sending out on bus 20, and the other one is sending out on bus 21. And these sends are sending out to auxiliary returns, which have got, in this case, reverbs on, right? Now I can do this. I can click on this auxiliary send. I can't click and put the blue triangle next to auxiliary sends, but I can click on this auxiliary send, sending out on bus 20, click on it, boom. Now the channel on the right changes to show the destination for that clicked on and selected auxiliary send. So I clicked on this auxiliary send which is sending out on bus 20 and now the return channel appears here on the right receiving on bus 20 with the chain of effects and this is a mirror of that auxiliary channel in the mixer look. Now yes I can put the blue triangle now to point to the channel strip setting slot at the top of this auxiliary return channel and the library to load effects based auxiliary return channel strip presets appears here. It's the same as the library when you click on the setting slot at the top of the channel in the mixer. And I can reliably load factory presets onto this auxiliary return channel. But if I try to construct my own chain of effects here, have the blue triangle pointing to the setting slot at the top, click save, it appears as if I have successfully saved my newly created auxiliary return channel of effects in whatever chain I decide to put together. It appears as if it's saved correctly and it will appear as a user patch. But when you load it, it loads completely incorrectly with the wrong effects on. Sometimes it will even load up with an auxiliary send put on the channel. It's, it's bugged, completely bugged. So yes, I can choose a track. There's its channel. If it has an auxiliary send, I can click on that send. The destination for that send appears here on the right of the inspector column. I can put the blue triangle pointing to the channel strip setting slot at the top and reliably load factory presets from the library onto that auxiliary return channel strip. But I can't create and save my own from here without them being bugged. So there's only one solution if you want to get into using the library to save and load your own auxiliary and group bus channel strip presets. Right, and I'll show you how you do that. Okay, again, I select all the tracks in my track column. They're all highlighted. Their channels in the mixer become highlighted as well, and the order in the mixer always mirrors the order in the track column here. So from left to right, we see, first of all, all the channels for the tracks in the same order as they are as their tracks there. After that, live all the auxiliary returns in any created group buses. So the best and only reliable way to be able to use the library to create, save and load your own as well as factory presets for auxiliary return effects channels is to do this. Select all your auxiliary returns in the mixer, all of them. Right. Before you do that though, click and select the last track in your track column. Right. Okay, now in the mixer, holding down shift, select all your auxiliary effects returns. With them all selected, right click on the grey blank background of any of those highlighted auxiliary return channels and create a track for the, all of them. 
when I do create track it's going to create a track in the track column for all of these auxiliary returns so each of them will have a track boom there we are and there are all the auxiliary return tracks we've now created a track for each of those auxiliary returns if I select the track it selects its channel in the mixer and vice versa so now every one of these auxiliary effects returns has its own track which means now I can choose the auxiliary return in the mixer its track is selected in the track column which means that a copy of that return channel is on the left of the inspector column with the blue triangle pointing to the channel strip setting slot at the top I can now access the factory auxiliary effects channel strip presets to load different effects return channel strip presets onto this return channel this effects return channel right but now if I construct my own chain of effects on here and with the blue triangle pointing to the setting slot I click save and save it it will save and when it loads from that point on it will load properly it will not be bugged right I'll, I'll do that for you now so this is an auxiliary return receiving on bus 20 so it's being sent out to you by this channel for the analog polysynth right okay I selected in the mixer it's created track is selected here here's a copy of that mixer channel right the auxiliary return so I'll now put my own effects on here make it something different so I'll get rid of that chorus I'm going to start by putting on a compressor so the signal coming into this auxiliary return, I'm going to begin by initially just compressing it a little, just a little, right? Then it's going to go into the a stereo delay, right? And I'm going to load up um, an eighth. No, I'm going to load up a, where's the quarter note? A quarter note. Come on, where's regular quarter note? Well, there isn't one. Damn, all right. Um, I'll load up the eighth and I'll switch this manually to quarter. I'll switch this manually to quarter. Okay, um, cross feedback down, feedback down to just a little, just let's say 10%. 10%. And oh, before I do that, stereo link it. Oh, wait, before I do that, set that deviation to zero. Okay, they've both got the same time. I'm going to remove the filter from both of them. So they've got full bandwidth. Same amount of feedback. Everything's the same for the left-right channel. Now link them. Now lower the output mix down. So the signal passing through this delay, coming out the other side, will pass through mostly dry, but with a little bit of delay added. Right, okay, that's that. Then I'm going to move my EQ down. I'm going to put on here a uh, SAR 1R reverb. No, no, no. I'm going to put on a regular Logic reverb. I'll put on the um, the Enverb. Just it's a smaller little reverb. And on here I'll put uh, a fast reverse reverb. And then after that, into this EQ, and on the EQ, I'm going to just shelve down the bottom end so that the signal leaving this chain into the compressor, into the delay, into the envelope coming out will have the bottom end reduced on it. All right? Take the bottom end off. And then I'm finally going to squash the entire lot with a third party compressor, this T Rex LA2A clone. I'm going to compress the snot out of it. So that the signal leaving the delay through the reverb and then out the other side finally gets really crushed before it leaves the channel. All right? Okay. Let's just say that's the chain of effects that I've created. I've now created my own chain of effects on this auxiliary return channel.
the blue triangle is pointing to the setting slot at the top. I now do save. I'm going to save it as uh, quarter delay reverse squashed. Uh, quarter quarter delay reversed verb rev verb squashed right boom save okay it's now in my user patches for auxiliary return channels so now if i choose any other auxiliary return channel its track is selected a mirror of that auxiliary return channel appears here on the left of the inspector column blue triangle pointing to the setting slot at the top, I can now go to user patches and there is my quarter delay reverse reverb squashed channel strip preset. Click it, it loads 100% correctly. All the effects are there in the right order with their individual settings, it loads correctly. Okay, right, so we can do that, which means we can very, very reliably create our own effects return channels, save them to the library. They will, from that point, load correctly without bugs. Right? But it doesn't work if you do it the other way. Click the send. The return channel appears here. Put the setting slot to the top. Construct your channel of effects and do save. Trust me, from that point on, when you try to load it, it loads completely wrong, bugged. Right? Okay. That's the only way to do it. Right. Okay, so the we create a, a track for each auxiliary return channel. That way, we can then select the channel in the mixer or the track, whichever way round, it selects the channel either way. That channel copy then appears in the inspector column blue triangle to the top we can then reliably create and save and load both our own and factory channel strip presets for effects return channels and of course we can always still point the triangle to the individual effects and the library for those things other than third party ones will appear here to load any compressor preset delay n verb channel eq etc right okay all right that's the only way to be able to reliably save your own channel strip presets for auxiliary effects returns and that they will load correctly without bugs, without problems, without the wrong things loading. Right. However, we've done this. It now means that we've got all these tracks in our track column, one for each of the auxiliary return channels. Right. And we might not want them cluttering up our track column here. Well, there's an easy way around that. Just select them all, hold down shift, select them all, the tracks, and then bring up the track shortcut menu. And you do that by right clicking anywhere in the gray empty area of any of the highlighted auxiliary return tracks. Or if like me, your right click is assigned to bring up your toolbox, then you access that track header shortcut menu by control left clicking, right? So we you highlight all the created tracks that you created for your auxiliary returns, bring up the shortcut menu with them all highlighted, and hide them all, hide track, boom. They're hidden, they're gone. They're gone from the track column. But any time you can unhide and they come back. Anything that's got the green H hide button selected, when you hide, it gets hidden. But notice they're still in my mixer. So I can any time go to the mixer and lower that auxiliary return or raise that one or whatever I want. Now, when you go to hide your created auxiliary return tracks, right, you might find that as soon as you hide them, boom, they disappear from the mixer here as well. That's because view follow hide is ticked. If that is ticked, view follow hide, if you hide a track here, its channel is hidden as well. If you untick follow hide, then you can hide those tracks you created for the auxiliary returns, hide them on the track column, but they'll still be here in the mixer. Okay. 
So anytime you want to do a, create a, a new effects chain for one of these auxiliary return channels and save it to the library or load one from the library, just unhide, select the channel, its track is selected, there's the mirror copy of that channel in the mixer, setting slot with the blue triangle pointing to it and now you can load one of your user patches or any of the factory ones, right? Then once you've done, rehide. Okay, that's effects returns. Now what about group buses? Okay, um, what I did for this second uh, library tutorial is I had a single vocal track on this Logic uh, project last time and a single guitar track. Now I've duplicated them twice. So I've now got three vocal tracks and I've put a different channel strip preset, preset on each one. That's the classic vocal channel strip preset. That's the dance vocal channel strip preset. And this one's got the tube vocal channel strip preset on. And with the guitars, I've duplicated those twice and I put a different guitar channel strip preset on each one. This one's got um, one of my own ones, Britain Clean Orange, that I did in the last tutorial. This one's got the preset Hot Rodded and this one's got the preset Burning Tweed. Right, okay. Now, if I select those three vocal tracks, their three channels get selected in the mixer there, right? They're all going to the final stereo out of Logic's mixer, right? But I'm going to route them to a group bus. So with them all highlighted, the channels for those three tracks all highlighted, which you can do by either selecting the three tracks holding shift and their channels become highlighted, or in the mixer, select the three tracks. Let's just select the three channels for the three tracks in the mixer. They become highlighted. doesn't matter whether the tracks for the channels are selected, as long as the three channels here are highlighted. And now when I when you have more than one channel selected in the mixer and highlighted, if you do something to one of those channels, it will do it to all of them. So there's my three vocal channels for my three vocal tracks highlighted. They're all going to the final stereo out, but I'm going to change their output so they all go to the next available bus, which is bus seven. Boom. Now these three vocal tracks and their channels are rooted to this auxiliary return receiving on bus 7. So all my vocals now go to this group bus, through this group bus, out the other side to Logic's final stereo channel. This is the Vogue. This is the Vogue. Right. Now, that allows me to very easily raise or lower all of my vocals together to any level I want. Individually, I can do them on their own channels. I can pan them individually to whatever pan position I want, adjust their relative levels to each other, but they're all going to this group bus. I can now raise and lower their level as a group. But I can also affect them as a group. I can pass the entire group of vocals through a compressor, EQ, whatever I like, to affect, process the group of vocals. And again, we get the same thing with the library. I can go to the setting slot at the top here, and I get the same factory presets for the effects return, auxiliary return channels. Now in Legacy, there are old group, look, voice group channel strip presets, which will load up a string of effects onto this group bus suitable for female or male or mixed voice ensembles. But the problem with these Legacy groups channel strip presets is that as soon as you load one onto a group bus, from that point onwards, if you try to record with through monitoring, it introduces a big latency delay. And that's got nothing to do with whether the track you're recording on is passing through that group bus. Any track from that point onwards, you just get latency when you go to record. I, I don't know why, it's something to do with them being legacy, right? So there are, if you go to the setting slot at the top of your created group bus, there are in legacy logic groups, there are these group bus channel strip presets for things like groups of toms yeah 
um, a percussion group, an ensemble vocals, or a voice group, etc. But I, as soon as you load them, you get latency, right? Okay. But regardless of that, leaving aside that those legacy presets exist, you can put them on as long as you finish recording, right? Um, obviously, we're going to want to create our own group bus chains of effects and save them and load them. Now, for example, I'm mixing a bunch of punk rock tracks for this band at the moment for a, for like a, a self-releasing album, which are also going to punt around labels and things, right? Now, all of the tracks want to have the same consistent sound. Like when you listen to an album by a band, they've recorded all the tracks in the same studio through the same mixing board, the engineer gets everything mic'd up, all the levels are set, all the EQ set, so every song that they record, the drums sound the same, the guitar sounds the same, etc. That's usually how it works. It's very, it's very uncommon for an album to be released where all the tracks have a completely different mix and a different sound for the different instruments, right? So, for example, with this punk band that I'm mixing, there are two or three guitars in each song, and I group the guitars to a group bus where I then process them as a group, and I want every track that I mix to have the same group guitar bus sound, so the guitars sound consistent across all the tracks that I mix. Therefore, I create my guitar group bus with whatever effects and EQ on it, save it, and then when I come to mix a new one of their tracks, I route all those guitars to the group bus, load up that preset, and the guitars will sound the same as in the previous songs. All right? So I've just routed my three vocal tracks and their channels to this group bus. I'm going to name this Vox. OK. And I can now build a chain of effects to process those vocals as a group. And I want to be able to save it to the library and load it from the library for future sessions. OK. Now, we know that when you select a track, on the left of the inspector column, we see the channel for the selected track, which is a mirror of the channel in the mixer. And on the right, we see the destination for the channel for the selected track. Now that these three audio tracks have had their channels routed to the group bus, when I select one of these vocal tracks, its channel appears here and the destination, the group bus, appears on the right here. But there's that same problem. If I choose to point the blue triangle to the setting slot at the top of this group bus channel, build a chain of effects and save it, it will be bugged and it won't load correctly. So the only solution is to make a track for the group bus the same as we did for the effects returns. Right. So I go and select the group bus channel in the mixer. All right. Let me select the last track in the tracks column here because when you create a track for a channel in the mixer it always puts it after the selected track in the track column. So I select my group bus, all my vocals are routed to this group bus but there's no effects on it. I right click and I create a track for it, boom it appears at the bottom of the track column and therefore it moves up the mixer to live behind the last channel for the last track because the order in the mixer always mirrors the order in the track column here. So this track created for that group bus is the last track in the column, therefore it appears last in all of the channels for all of the tracks in the track column. After that live the auxiliary returns which have been hidden, the tracks for which we created have been hidden, right? Okay. So. There's a group bus. It now has a track. So we can now do the same thing we did with the effects auxiliary returns. Now, because we've created a track for this auxiliary group bus that the vocals are routed to, now when I select it in the mixer, its track is selected, which means a copy of that group bus channel appears on the left of the inspector column. It's just a copy of the one in the mixer. All right. 
Now, with the blue triangle pointing to the channel strip setting slot at the top, I can now build my own chain of group bus processes and effects for my vocals to root through. And when I do save with the triangle pointing to the setting slot, it will save that created group bus chain of effects correctly. And from that point on, I can load it onto any other group bus in any other project. Let me quickly put a group bus together for the vocals. I'm going to start with an EQ. And uh, actually what I'll do is I'll use, yeah, I'll use the logic basic EQ and I'll use that just to cut out the bottom end. All right. Then let's say it's going to go into a um, compressor. And I'll put a compressor preset on, which I can either do from the compressor's own internal library there or point blue triangle to the compressor and load a preset from here like vocals classic VCA right boom done okay so EQ uh, doing a low cut into the compressor then after that I'm going to put it into one of Logic's vintage EQs the um, the 1073 clone where I'm going to give it oh I'm going to thin the vocals out at 220 I'm going to dip down a bit um, I'm going to give them a bit of presence at 3.2k and a little bit of air at 12k at the top. Drive it a bit more, whatever I want, boom, that's done. Then finally, it's going to go into a third party compressor, the T Rex. There's my Mac fanning up, the T Rex LA2A. I'm going to give it quite a good old bit of compression, squash it a bit. Okay, and now I've built. An effects chain for my vocals. But finally, I'm going to put one other thing on here. I'm going to put the, um, where is it? The soft tube SAR 1R reverb. It's very cheap, this. It's a very, very basic reverb, but I use it all the time for pre delay. So I'm going to put some pre delay on those vocals, about 100 milliseconds. Turn the wet down so I'm, I've got hardly any of it. Let's solo that auxiliary return channel, which I can do here in the mixer here on its track or here on the copy of the channel in the inspector column right now the vocals are passing through here through this chain of effects let's hear that let me just put my headphones on this is the vocal this is the vocal yeah this is the vocal as you can hear it's a very very squashed thinned out sound with the pre-delay on here this is the vocal. But I'll roll that off so it's quite subtle. This is the vocal. This is the vocal. Yeah, this is the vocal. Right, there you go. I've created a channel strip preset for this vocal group bus. Well, I've created the chain of effects. Now I put the setting, the, the blue triangle pointing to the setting slot at the top. And now if I do save, I will save this chain of effects for my vocal group bus and it will save it correctly without bugs. And therefore I can then load it onto any other group bus for vocals in the future. So save, vocal, thin, squashed, pre-delay, right? Save, boom. There it is in user patches, but only it's only in user patches for auxiliary returns or group bus return channels. All right, there it is. User patches. Box thin squash pre delay. And at the top, there's that other one I did. Quarter delay reverb, reverse reverb squashed, etc. Right. So that's how you do that. Okay. Now, if you want to, right, you can hide the tracks. That you've created for those group bus channels in the mixer you can do that same as we did with the auxiliary return channel tracks all right look i've unhidden them now there's all the tracks for for the six auxiliary returns i can now activate the green hide button on the group bus track and when i hide it will be gone but it will still be in the mixer because view follow hide isn't ticked but just to show you there's something else with these group buses that you create, let's unhide it, right? This is a track for this group bus and the three vocals, 
right? The three vocal tracks in the, ch the channels, they're all rooted to this group bus, which now has a track. Now Logic knows that those three vocal tracks with the, and their channels are rooted to that group bus channel and its track. Logic knows that. So just to show you one last thing, we can turn this group bus track that we created into a summing track and then the three vocals that are rooted to it will live inside it which organizationally is very handy so to do that I select the three vocal tracks that are rooted to this group bus track in its channel boom 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 holding down shift I bring up the shortcut menu with those three vocal tracks selected and I create track stack. Now normally if you do this without these vocal tracks first being rooted to a group bus that you did manually, Logic will create a group bus and route the vocals to that group bus, create a track for it and put the three vocals inside that group bus track. But Logic knows that these three vocal tracks and their channels are already rooted to that group bus so what it will do if I create a track stack for those three vocal tracks is it will simply turn the group bus track that I already created and rooted those vocal tracks to it will turn that group bus track into a summing or folder stack track right create track stack summing is the one we want boom and it will move up above these three vocals and the three vocals will be living inside the group bus track. Boom. Hup. There. That Vox group bus track that I created moves up the mixer in front of the three vocals. The three vocals are put, the three vocal tracks are put inside it. They're still rooted to it because I did all that manually. The group bus track and its channel still has that chain of effects that I custom built on it. But now the three vocal tracks and their channels live inside that group bus track, which I can compact and open up and expand any time. Now this is track stacks, which is a major part of Logic Pro X. I'm just showing you this here because we're looking at the library and as part of that, we're looking at creating tracks for auxiliary returns and group bus channels. So we can then reliably use the, the library to save and load presets. As you have created a group bus track manually, why not put all the tracks that are rooted to it inside it and make that group bus track into a summing stack track? Right? Okay. It's just a little extra. Yeah. Everything's still rooted the same. The three vocal tracks in their channels are still rooted as I manually did it to that group bus. Yeah. But now the three vocal tracks in their channels live inside that group bus because the group bus track has been turned into this sort of this sort of enclosing folder thing that can be closed to save space and opened up any time. The audio regions that are inside when it's closed are represented by this blue graphic. All right, if I reduce the length of these, the blue graphic when it's compacted reduces to the same length to show that inside that stack when I open it there is one or more regions of that length. Boom and there they are. All right. That's track stacks. It's a big part of Logic which is why when Logic Pro X came out it was one of the first full-length college quality tutorials that I did on Logic because it's a massive part of Logic Pro X track stacks because a lot of the channel strip presets you load from the library are track stacks like for example this drum kit designer producer patch kit it's a track stack open it up and all the channels making up the drums live inside it all these ind individual drum tracks and their ch channels are rooted to this group bus which is a track stack same with the drum machine designers. You load them up, they're all track stacks. And other presets you load are track stacks. So if you really want to learn about track stacks, 
Search our channel for Track Stacks, and there is full in depth, as I say, college quality tutorials explaining it absolutely fully, plus the entire concept of grouping and bussing and everything like that, which is a sound recording tutorial as part of it. Okay, but I'm just showing you that now because we we rooted our vocals manually to a group bus created a track for that group bus channel well if we've got that group bus channel as a created track on our track area why not turn it into a summing track stack and then everything rooted to it on in the tracks lives and the mixer lives inside it and it can be compacted and opened up any time Okay, mate, that is how you can use the blue triangle thing with the library reliably to create, save, and then load without bugs presets for auxiliary effects return channels and presets for group bus channels, plus the extra thing of turning those group bus channels into a track stack. Or turning the track for that group bus channel that we created into a track stack type track so that everything rooted to it then lives inside it all right there you go there's some more stuff on the mixer already um, so I'm now going to compact that and remember I unhide there's all my auxiliary return tracks one for each auxiliary return channel but they're hidden now okay all right um, I hope that's useful logics library it's pretty cool huh